good, y'all? What's good, y'all? It's your boy HB, Final Round, Drive Time. I want to talk about Errol Spence versus Manny Pacquiao. Now, before this, I made a video analysis and prediction of who I think is going to win the fight. And I think I'm going to uh, change up my prediction here. But what I wanted to address right now is... Is Errol Spence underestimating Manny Pacquiao? Now, I had somebody on my comment section. My dog's going crazy back there. I had somebody in my comment section say, Hey, how are you going to say Errol Spence is underestimating Manny Pacquiao? He's in the best shape of his life. He's training his ass off. He's in great shape. You know, he's not talking too much shit. How is he underestimating Manny Pacquiao? Well, maybe I should rephrase it. I don't think that Errol Spence is underestimating Manny Pacquiao in the sense that he's not preparing and taking him lightly. But maybe it's more so, Errol, I think Errol Spence is ignorant. And I don't mean that in the most condescending sense, right? I mean, if you're sometimes if you're just ignorant, it just means you lack information or knowledge of a certain subject war in general. I just think Errol Spence is ignorant. Somewhat like how Keith Thurman was ignorant. Only Keith Thurman was a little bit more uh, reckless in how he was talking shit to Manny Pacquiao. And look, maybe he was trying to get a mental edge, whatever the case may be, hype up the fight to get more money. But nonetheless, I felt like Keith Thurman was quite a bit ignorant in terms of what he was going up against. Otherwise, I don't think he would have talked as much shit. But I think Errol Spence is a little bit ignorant, okay? And why do I say that? Because I think most fighters that go up against Manny Pacquiao are ignorant. I'm not saying, once again, that Errol Spence isn't prepared. But I do think he's underestimating how good Manny Pacquiao is in terms of his skill and in terms of his technique okay that's what I'm trying to point out when you look at Manny Pacquiao he's not the most intimidating presence right think about let's reference Mike Tyson Mike Tyson wasn't just devastating in his prime he was one of the most feared men on the planet his presence would fucking terrify everybody it was like watching a tiger and if you're around him it feels like you're around a tiger and you're just hoping he doesn't turn on you and decide to fucking eat you he just had such an intimidating presence and you don't need to have that presence to be a great fighter but here's the thing about Pacquiao he's small he's short he's a Christian he's very humble meek he speaks in broken english you know he's a nice guy he doesn't talk shit outside the ring hell he doesn't talk shit inside the ring he's this very likable guy and when you're around him i think that can kind of deceive you especially if you're going up against him you're like ah it's manny bad guy he's a nice guy i know he's great i know he has a an amazing amazing legacy but i'm not scared of him and understandably so. But when Manny Pacquiao gets in that fucking ring, he turns into a demon. I don't care how much of an angel he is outside the ring. You can see it on his facial expressions. When he steps inside that fucking ring, he turns into a demon. But not only that, I think his aggression in the ring masked his skill and technique. Once again, let's re reference Mike Tyson because he's a perfect example of this. A lot of people thought that Mike Tyson was just some brawler in his prime and, you know, it's just really aggressive and gifted and, you know, just had the gift of power. Um, Mike Tyson was one of the most skilled technical fighters of all time in his prime. That peekaboo style that Customato introduced him to, 
it's it's such a hard style style to master. There's a reason why you don't see too many people executing that style. But not only that, you know, obviously it's for more undersized fighters, but it's not an efficient style, and it requires lots of skill, lots of technique, and phenomenal cardio, lots of footwork, lots of angles, lots of head movement, right? Mike Tyson used to come forward, cut the ring off, stick that jab in your face with different variations. And he would make you miss with his head movement, use his footwork to get inside, and he would just drop bombs on you in combos. And he would just take you out. And a lot of casuals who don't understand the subtleties of the sport look at that and say, and even, even skilled fighters, professional fighters, make this mistake they look at the aggression and they say ah oh, he's not skilled he's just you know he's a brawler and that's so wrong it's so wrong because you know look there's a difference between being a pressure fighter and a brawler Manny Pacquiao well let's hold that for a second brawl and even brawlers have subtle skills you know like Ruslan Probotnikov may not be the most technical fighter, but still has a lot of subtle skills, okay? But then you think about pressure fighters like Triple G, Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, Manny Pacquiao could fall in that category somewhat, but I wouldn't necessarily just call him a pure pressure fighter. But anyways, pressure fighters tend to get overlooked at how skilled they are in technical. They're very, it's very subtle because of the, the aggression. You know, they're constantly cutting off the ring, closing closing the distance, and even taking a few shots from time to time. And rightfully so, when you're constantly looking for the fight, you're going to get caught sometimes. But those guys don't have the success they have if they're not skilled. Triple G doesn't, doesn't become a champion if he's not skilled. You know... Julio Cesar Chavez doesn't become one of the most dominant fighters of all time if he's not skilled. It's just this thing to where people tend to think aggression, if there's lots of aggression, it lacks skill and technique. Or if you're an action-packed fighter, it lacks skill and technique. And that's so far from the truth. Especially with African-American fighters, they tend to think like, oh, boxing off the back foot and being defensive, that means you're a technical, skilled fighter, and that's just not true. And I think this is the issue with Manny Pacquiao and why there's ignorance uh, from his opponents and why there's a, a sense of underestimation. You know, they look at him and they're like, this guy just looks like he's reckless. You know, it just looks reckless. It doesn't look skilled. It doesn't look technical. But I'm telling you right now, I think Errol Spence, even though I like him, he's a good fighter. I, I like a lot of things he does. He's a pressure fighter. He's a southpaw. He goes to the body consistently, which a lot of professional fighters don't do. He has good power. He can knock you the fuck out. Solid speed. I don't want to say he's one-dimensional, but he's one-dimensional in the sense that he fights with one style, right? He showed some blemishes of uh, being able to fight off the back foot, but what he does best and what he does well, and his bread and butter is putting pressure. He utilizes his jab. It's a good stiff jab. There's a lot of things to like about Earl Spence. He's young. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have a good chance at winning this fight. But I'm going to roll with Manny Pacquiao. I'm a little biased. I train at wild card. I'm a little biased. But I also believe in Manny Pacquiao. And I love this guy. And I respect his legacy. And I think he's great. And I think he should get a little bit more extra credit. Considering he's undersized in most divisions he's fought in. Most of the time he's been undersized. If not all, all the time. And... I just think that he brings a little bit more to the table with the experience and his boxing ability. I think the footwork, I think the head movement, the feints will be very effective in this fight. And I don't think Errol Spence sees that. 
So in a sense, he is underestimating because he hasn't done his homework. Not underestimating in the sense that he's not preparing. But here's the thing. I think Errol Spence, he doesn't come off as the type of fighter who's never going to be prepared for a fight. At least not at this point in his career. He's still hungry. He's still building a legacy. And I think he will always be a hard worker. He just comes off that way. But I don't think he understands what he's going to experience in the brain. He has a good shot. I think if he does win this fight, it will look something like Tiafimo Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko. I think if that's the case, Vasily Lomachenko will be Pacquiao in this fight. Or Pacquiao will be Vasily. And I think Spence will be Tiafimo. Because the key to the fight will be the jab and the body work. Spence has a great jab. His punch placement isn't completely uh, spot on. And I mean Earl Spence. It's not, not the most spot on punch placement. But he's persistent. And like I said, he stays in your face. And has a lot of volume. You know, he's like Kobe. He's going to jack him up. He may not make them all, but he's going to land a lot. Or he's going to land some. And that's the key for, for Spence. Can he land the jab? If he can't land the jab, he's not winning this fucking fight. He's not. So, I'm going to roll with Manny Pacquiao. I'm going to go out on a limb. I think he has a little bit more tools in terms of his footwork. I think uh, Spence is a little stuck in the mud when it comes to his footwork. I don't think he has a lot of diversity in his game. In terms of switching it up stylistically very diverse within his style but not so much in terms of switching it up being a switch hitter like say Terrence Crawford I think Manny Pacquiao has a lot of subtlety to his game and even I at times underestimate how skilled and technical he is so I don't think that Errol Spence is not preparing for this fight and underestimating Manny Pacquiao in terms of his legacy. I just think he's ignorant. I just think he's ignorant. Because it's hard to see. It's hard to see that with Manny. Outside the ring and just observing him inside the ring in terms of highlight film. It's hard to see. Very difficult. He's very slick. He's more slick than a lot of people give him credit for. Just like fucking even Mayweather admitted to that. Like, He's tricky. And I think he was mentioning, he was talking to Adrian Broner before the fight or talking to other fighters who were going up against him. And they said, hey, this is not a guy you should underestimate. He's a lot better than he comes off. A lot better. A lot. So that's what I think about that. Comment below. Tell me what you think. Is Errol Spence underestimating Manny Pacquiao? Is he ignorant of what Manny Pacquiao is truly capable of in terms of his skill and technique? Let me know. Like the video. Subscribe. This is a new channel. I'm trying to build it up, motherfuckers. If you want to be part of the journey, join now because I will not forget you. Okay? I will not forget the people who started with me. I am going to be big one day. I'm in the boxing game. I'm going to make some noise very soon here. So subscribe. Like it, baby. Hell, fucking dislike it. Thumbs down. I don't give a fuck. But this is your boy, HB, final round, drive time. I got my money on Manny Pacquiao, even though it's a close fight. It's 50-50. But Pac-Man is he's legendary. He's legendary legendary for a reason it's not by coincidence that this man is is as great as he is what 12 division 12 divisions he's conquered you know and he's undersized come on man you ain't just a fucking aggressive boxer who brawls <laughs> there's more to you than that so until another one stay safe y'all enjoy enjoy your sunday get at me